Tony, Sunday is just days away, and it is time to make some predictions. I am joined by editors Beth Stevens, Imogen Lloyd Webber, and Ryan Lee Gilbert, and we are going to predict who might be walking home with some Tonys. This is a very difficult thing to do. So let's just start off by saying everything is always up in the air, but we kind of know what's going on. So let's go through some of the categories, shall we? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Best play. I feel like there's a clear front runner this year. Sure. Harry Potter, which won nine Olivier Awards, um, so a very strong contender. I mean, it raises the bar in terms of stagecraft and bringing so many new audiences to theatre. It's quite wonderful. It's a huge hit, and it was acclaimed across the board. People love it. It's not going anywhere. And yeah, they do technical things in that show that we've never seen before. Wizardry, mm. one <laughs> exactly. might say. Exactly, magic. It's also the only open show of the category. I think it's a lock. I think so. We all okay. feel, we all feel <laughs> that All right, way. good. Uh, let's jump over to revival. So revival of a play. I feel like Angels in America I agree. is the front runner here. It just it feels like such a epic production, and it feels like an event. It's wonderful. Marion Elliott's production is fantastic. Came from the National Theatre in London, and it's been 25 years since it's been on Broadway. But what about Three Tall Women? It's oh, brutally gorgeous. truthful, and it really takes you on a journey. So I. Uh, up there. Right, yeah, no, and this is the first time that we've seen this, you know, Edward Albee play on Broadway. You have Glenda Jackson giving an insane performance, which we'll talk about insane soon, good. but insanely good. Yeah, and Joe Mantello did something with it that is really fascinating and special. Definitely a major competitor. Now, let's just jump right into that. Glenda Jackson, yeah. I think, <laughs> is a lock for yes. lead actress Agreed. in a play. Yeah. Major performance. Uh, the other three actresses are representing the only nominations of their plays. And yeah, we've, at 82 years old, she's giving a towering performance. And she was a politician for decades. So to suddenly then go back to acting and then dominate in such a way. It is extraordinary. Yeah. Every time she's been on Broadway, she's been nominated for a Tony. This is her fifth time. Five Tony nominations, I think she's going to take yeah, it home she's, this year. Oh, she's <laughs> never won before. She's never won. First time win. Mm -hmm. Congratulations, Glenda Jackson. <laughs> Absolutely. Go build that shelf. Uh, let's jump over to revivals of mm. musicals. Mm, yeah. Three musicals. We have Carousel, My Fair Lady, and Once on this Island. I think they all have their fans. It's, it's, it's actually a great race. Agreed. Like, I know we're big fans of Once on this Island. That's the show that has the heart. Everyone goes to that show. They love it. They tell everyone to see it. It holds a special place, but it opened a while ago. You know? It's in a very intimate theater, Circle mm -hmm. in the Square. It's very immersive. And then, of course, you contrast that with, say, an epic like My Fair Lady. A lovely production, shall we say. But it's, I mean, it's huge. I think My Fair Lady edges out Carousel. And My Fair Lady seems to be the show seems to be sort of the safe bet here. People know the score, and Eliza Doolittle is a wonderful character everyone knows, so I right. think it has a little bit of an edge here. Let's talk about featured actor in a musical. The featured races are always kind of a crapshoot, because <laughs> yeah. it's hard to tell wh which direction they will go in. Uh, Beth, do you have a gut reaction here? My gut for this one is Gavin Lee in SpongeBob mm. SquarePants, yeah. but Ariel Statchel is giving a wonderful performance in The Band's Visit, got great reviews. I think this could be one of those categories where you just get a surprise. I mean, Norbert Leo Butts is also giving a wonderful performance. Two-time winner. Two-time right. winner, yes. And I have to say, Grey Henson and Mean Girls. I sat there watching Mean Girls thinking, oh, oh, this is a Tony nomination lock. And because this category is so wide open, that might be a little bit of a surprise there that night. All right, so featured actresses in musicals. Lindsay Mendez for mm. Carousel. Carrie Pippridge is a great part. Mm -hmm. uh, Audrey McDonald won her first of many Tonys for that role. She seems to be who most people are talking about. And she's very much a member of the Broadway community. And you do have some icons, though, obviously Diana Rigg, Renee Fleming in Carousel. But Lindsay is just someone who has been around, who has grafted, has worked really hard. And I wouldn't be surprised if the community reward her for that. Okay, featured actors in plays. Nathan Lane, the great Nathan Lane, is giving an epic performance. It could have been even considered a leading performance, perhaps, playing uh, Roy Cohn. Is he the winner? Third Tony, is it for Nathan yeah. Lane? Yeah, be the third yeah. Tony. But then again, they can always give us a surprise, right? The Tonys mm -hmm. like to give us some random thing that we didn't expect. So Anthony Boyle won the um, Olivier, so definitely a possibility there. Common. And he's right. slightly, no spoilers, keep the secrets, everybody. Uh, he does slightly steal that show. Yeah, I was going to say, you walk out of Harry Potter and the Cursed Child talking about two things. Mm. The magic they did on stage and Anthony Boyle's yeah. performance. I just want to give a little shout out to David Morse. Yes, who is phenomenal thank you. Mm. Mm -hmm. And a great actor of stage and screen. This is his first nomination and could just be the win. Absolutely. 
Okay, so talking about featured actress in a play. Can I, I just say, Denise sorry, there are so many Brits in this category. I'm a little bit <laughs> yes, embarrassed. Yes, I know, super like, Brit. It's basically just Laurie Metcalf as the representing American. the American. Yeah. I'm just this. Well, just Denise sorry, is Irish. I just want to shout okay. that out. Just sorry, <laughs> but continue. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Apologize for for that. No, I think you were saying Denise Goff. I does. think Denise Goff yeah. plays Harper Pitt in mm -hmm. Angels in America is giving a stunning performance. Right. I mean, these, this is a tough category also. So It knows, is, because you have her co-star, Susan Brown, who is just doing so many things in that show and really does you know, the most with all of those little roles. But like we were saying earlier, there's a lot of love for Harry Potter and the Cursed Child as well. And no, but Dumezwane. Absolutely. Yeah. Hermione Granger, that's a, that's a ripe yeah, role. We'll see. Leading actor in a musical, Ethan Slater, total newcomer. He was fantastic. He really carries the show. True is, is triple it? threat, right? Yeah. Absolutely. He is moving all over that stage, doing all kinds of things. And this role in this show has been his life for six years. And you know, and finally he has this moment that he is shining on the Broadway stage. I think a Tony Award would be a nice cherry on the Sunday that has been this for Ethan Slater. I don't want to count out Joshua Henry. For Carousel, he's playing Billy Bigelow. This is an iconic role. Mm -hmm. uh, the first time a person of color has done this role on Broadway, and he gets to sing one of the most beloved songs in all of musical theater, and he's knocking it out of the park. So yep. don't count him out. Ethan so. has an element of surprise. Mm -hmm. I, I think Josh Henry, we've seen this is his third nomination. He's a fantastic actor. We knew he could be a great Billy Bigelow. Oh, yeah. Ethan Slater just sort of has the element of surprise, which might push him over the edge a little bit. Best book of a musical. Let's talk about some of the, the writing awards for, for musicals. Tina Fey? Yeah. Tina Fey, Tina Fey, Tina Fey, Tina Fey? Is this the chance to really give Mean Girls... Um... It's a way to honor the show. Mm -hmm. Sure. To honor her and her comedy and just translating that great movie to the stage and making it work. It's a sharp script, but it's also moving. And I think that might surprise people when they go and they leave. There really is a message there. Mm -hmm. And it also feels like Tina Fey is one of those people that you want to reach like an EGOT at some point. Yeah. And so <laughs> let's, get, let's get her Tony in there. And then best score... This also just seems like a lock for David Yazbek. I think so. I took Dad, Andrew Lloyd Webber, everyone, um, to see Bands Visit. Um, it was sort of third preview, so that was a bit unfair. Dad sat there enraptured. I heard bravos coming out of his mouth. That never happens, everybody. <laughs> and then he led the standing ovation. Wow. What David Yazbek is doing musically is on another level and I'm afraid I think it would be a disgrace if you didn't win best school. Sorry, just let it out there. You never hear music like this on Broadway. No, this right. is Middle Eastern music for the most part and yet it works as musical theatre as well and it's funny and it's touching. And David Yazbek needs a Tony. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. He, he deserves a Tony. Tony. Yes. <laughs> Director of a play. Oh. This Who's is the front runner here, Brian? I mean, we, as we've been saying, Marianne Elliott, she's won two Tony Awards already. She has once again done something incredible with Angels in America. I think it's hers to lose, but she has some contenders. I, I disagree. disagree. John <laughs> Tiffany raised the bar in terms Absolutely. of Absolutely. What he has done is unbelievable. I don't disagree that Marianne Elliott deserves her accolades, mm -hmm. but I think John Tiffany might have it just because of the design elements that he pulled together and the magic of sure. the show and just the whole world of Harry Potter from the minute you walk in the theater. Mm -hmm. That's all and he helped write it as well. Yeah. Like he has lots of ownership over there. His DNA is in that show. Absolutely. Marianne has lots of Tonys. <laughs> <laughs> Now, for musical directors, it's a very creative batch here. I think Tina Landau, what she did with SpongeBob SquarePants, wildly imaginative. But then you also have what Michael Arden did with this Island. Bart Scher is sort of a favorite. Every year, David Cromer, I mean, for Band's Visit. This is, this is tough. impossible. It I, really I, is. I can't even begin to I tell you. I feel like it's between Tina great. Landau and David Cromer. I think t honoring Tina Landau and SpongeBob, because I I'm going to give you a little uh, spoiler. I don't think SpongeBob's going to win Best Musical, and this could be a way to honor that show. Mm -hmm. But I, I also think what David Cromer did with Band's Visit is really special. Right. And like we were saying with John Tiffany, Tina Landau's DNA is in SpongeBob as well. She helped conceive this whole yeah. thing. You know, she didn't just show up and direct it. It's, it's partly her creation. And I think, yeah, I think she has a great shot. But David Cromer, you know, did something really special. It's a strong yeah. category. Mm -hmm. Very strong. So if choreography... I don't feel like there's a clear front runner. I mean, Justin Peck might have the edge because Carousel is so ballet heavy and mm -hmm. it's definitely a real dance show. Well, I mean, yes, and also that New York City ballet link that he has. Right. In saying that, just a shout out here that we have Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, a play, is in the best choreography category. And that really speaks 
to how exquisite and groundbreaking Harry Potter is, I think. But Christopher Catelli pulled out two nominations, yeah. you know, two shows. Does that shows. split the vote, do you think? Yes. I think, I think that's something that can happen, yeah, absolutely. But great work in both. Okay, leading actress in a musical. This is another tough one. I think I'm going with Katrina Lenk for the band's visit. It I feels agree. like it's it's been a performance of the year that right. we, came out in the fall, and I feel like she's really sort of the heart of the show. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are I, six names in this category, so it's a big old yeah. category. They're obviously having yeah. an argument about this <laughs> at the nomination sure. committee. Um, but Katrina is just sublime. I think no, it definitely feels like Katrina Lenk's been the it girl of this Broadway season, but Lauren Ambrose seems to have impressed everybody that sees Because we've that never show. seen her in a musical. Exactly. Uh, leading actor in a play. It's something called Tony Bate. They do what Oscar Bate, Tony Bate. That would be Andrew Garfield yes. in Angels in America. Yes. Yeah. Lock, no? I think, I think it's, it's a stunning, it's stunning performance. Yeah. It's a Absolutely. stunning performance. It's a demanding show, and he's really giving his all. Okay, finally, best musical. This is kind of the big one, at least for me. Right, mm. uh, yeah. Just for you. <laughs> Beth, you don't think it's going to be SpongeBob? I don't. I'm sorry to say that earlier. I think it's a wonderful show. I think the band's visit yes. will uh, win. It won a bunch of awards Whenever. last year when it was off Broadway. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's, it hasn't been in this award season as much because it was eligible last year. I mean, I love this show. Mm -hmm. You guys know that. Yeah, I think band's visit has a slight edge. Mm -hmm. but, but it's a it good... is the prestige favorite of yeah. the season, for sure. Yeah. Definitely. Okay, well, we did it. Did we it. made it through. I hope that your favorites win on Tony Night, and be sure to check Broadway.com for all the best Tony coverage.